I'll be going over Melodia by Via Lobos. So the, I'll be going over different practice techniques, different fingerings, and different ways to approach the piece. Um, so the important things to realize on this piece is um, it's in D major, so you're always going to have F sharp and C sharp. You're going to have a few accidentals, of course, here and there, on the G sharp mainly. And then you're also going to have, um, it's an also in tenor clef, so you have to really get comfortable with this new clef. Um, we only go into bass clef once, and that's for the double stop near um, measure 23. So, it's really important to get comfortable with reading this tenor clef and not just um, relying on writing note names or fingerings and just kind of going through it. And you need to be really comfortable and, and be able to read any of these notes in tenor clef. So, I'll go, go ahead and play it for you. because this is in a new clef, tenor clef. So I'll go ahead and give you these notes. So we start in measure three, we start on a C sharp. Next note is A. C sharp, E, I mean B, C sharp, E natural, E, F sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, Shift back for this C sharp, D, E, harmonic A, G natural, F sharp, E, D, F C sharp, E, I mean B, C sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A. Similar to the beginning, C sharp, A, B, C sharp, B, C sharp, G sharp, A, D, E, D, C sharp, D, C 
sharp. D. E. F sharp. D. E. F sharp. G. F sharp. C sharp. D. E. Harmonic A. G. F sharp. C sharp, B, C sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, open A, D, G, F sharp, B, C sharp, D, F sharp, G, F sharp, G, C sharp, B, A, F sharp, C sharp, D, E, G, F sharp. So now that we have the note names, let's go over some fingerings. So in measure three, we're going to start on a three. We go to open A. One, three, four, three, or two. You can, go, you can either go, um, you can shift up a little bit to get this two on the C sharp to get ready for the G, um, the G sharp. So let me play it for you, the two different variants. Just do a mini shift, which is a little more um, challenging to get, but I'll leave it up to you to decide. Here's the other, is the mini shift. So up to you, whichever feels more comfortable for you. They're both valid. The thing you don't want to do is you don't want to extend for that G sharp because we don't extend with our four finger like that. We do extensions, but it would be like this. Would only be extending like this or like or uh, or backwards we never extend in in a closed position with our forefinger it's never a good idea so you're, you're either shifting or extending so we're either going to go um, two on the c sharp and then four or we go three and then shift so whichever feels most comfortable for you do they're both good fingerings i think After you get G sharp with a four, we'll open A, B with a one, shift to four with on the E, two on D, shift back for the on three with his um, three on C sharp, one on B. Now let me play it for you. eight back on three on C sharp shift to one on the D extended two on that E four um, four on the F sharp one on the D and then go back into closed position instead of this extension one, three on the E slide and three on the F sharp four on the G back to three on F sharp Shift to C sharp with a three, four. Shift to one on the E. Play the harmonic A. And then four, a four on the G. Three on F sharp. And one on E. Four on D. Three on C sharp. One on B. Let me play from measure nine for you. Um, actually, let me go to measure eight. Continuing from measure 10, 11, 12. 
15 on the B. Hit stand for the C sharp on two. So we're gonna get ready for a couple measures ahead on the G sharp. So extend it two on C sharp. Now go to that same two on F sharp on the D string. Measure 18 with a G sharp on the four on the G sharp. Open A. G, F sharp, 3 on B, 1 on A, now bar it, bar um, C it on the C and G string with a 1 on the D and A, I'll go ahead and play from measure 9. now since um, in 20 the next time we go over um, the next um, section is pretty similar to the beginning except the last line slightly varied and we'll go over those fingerings but let's go over the phrasing in this first section so you want to not start off too loud because we're at a mezzo forte and later on in measure 9 we go to our forte which is the highest um, dynamic we have in this piece so you want to build up to it and phrase it so we um, so you want to start off by um, first getting this rhythm. So it goes one, two, one, and two, lolly, one. One, lolly, two, lolly, one, two. So really practice that, getting that difference between the, the eighth note, um, the regular eighth notes, and then the triplet eighth notes. So one, and two, lolly, one. So get your practice that, really get used to those rhythms. Because you're going to be using these rhythms throughout the entire piece. So another way you can practice those rhythms is without the slurs. Because um, it's a little easier to kind of approach it. So practice it without the slurs like this. Oh, sorry. So now once you get those um, the rhythm going, Start adding in the slurs again. So now, once you get that um, the rhythm and the slurs together, now now we can phrase it a lot better. So um, you want to think about doing terrace dynamics with these. So you want to start off kind of going and really go to that higher um, F sharp. because it's our highest dynamic here and then we start going down more and more after measure 9 so similar rhythm in measure 9 all the way to measure 19 so just making sure that rhythm is steady is really gonna help with um, phrasing so I'll play measure 9 with phrasing in mind now those high points on those notes you don't want to go you don't want to make them stick out too much because you it's a melodic line and it's very much singing quality so a good way to also practice this phrasing is practice singing it because if you can sing it really well it's it translates a lot easier to the phrasing because you don't want to have it an unnatural kind of 
everywhere kind of going ta ta. So ya ha ya. You don't want to have too many jumps or hiccups in that. So you want to practice a nice progressive line. So practice singing it is a good idea. So it's e. I'm sorry. And take a little bit of time on that A natural harmonic. Because it's our highest note of the piece as well. So make it stick out too much, but don't go. Don't go like this. Kind of, they're tenuto markings, so you want to kind of make it a little smoother longer. So it's kind of extending that, that note just by a little bit and maybe, maybe a little more faster bow speed. It'll be a good idea. So continuing forward, um, you slowly and slowly get more and more quieter to those chords um, at measure 23. So I'll be starting at measure 19. practice those double stops, because double stops are a hard thing to tune, especially fifths. So a good a way to approach this chord is to really practice sitting on those two notes. Because if you're too tight, it's going to bend the pitch. If you're too soft, it's going to also bend the pitch. So you want to find that angle and the right amount of weight where you you're just sitting on the string, you're not squeezing, you're not going too down, you're just allowing that natural hand weight to just find that, the right amount of the weight on the string. And pull. Making sure you're counting as well, you're going one, two, one, two, three, two, four, two. And don't make it an abrupt stop, just die away. Take a look at this second half of this piece. Um, it's the same music as the beginning, just with a different last line. Um, so you want to phrase it pretty similar to the to the first way you phrase it. Follow that phrasing you did, then add slightly different dynamics and maybe pull and push with the tempo a little bit, but not too drastically because you don't want to you don't want to change the piece and you still want to feel that the inner pulse you're going with it. So yeah. Play around with it, make it yours, make it special. Now this different varied music um, starts at 45, but starts on an up bow, on the B. starts on a B, uh, with a 1, and then open A, open D, 4 on G, 3 on F sharp, 2 on B natural, so we can get this C sharp, and then 4 on C sharp, open D, 3 on F sharp, 4 on G, 1 on E, I mean B, and then 1 on E, Three on F sharp, four on G, three on C sharp, one on B, open A, three. Now you can either do two different fingerings um, with this last two lines. You can either go three, one, two, four, four, three, or you can go three. So it, it, it kind of makes it a little more smoother instead of a, having it sl slide, but leave it up to you. So um, three on the F sharp, three on C sharp, four D, one E, four G, and 
three on F sharp. So these bowings are pretty good, except I would change the bowing at 50 with the, um, there's a quarter in the two eighth notes. I would slur the eighth note still, but then end down bow on the, on the C sharp. And so, so you end down bow there and you can end down bow at the end, just to, so you're not ending awkwardly on an up bow. So I'll demonstrate. start off pretty quietly. Because that's um that's where the phrase is going, and then you go back to uh, a higher dynamic at that F sharp. So. Yeah, so you just want to follow just kind of a build. A terrace dynamics is what they call it. So you want to kind of go with it, but then slowly go down and go back up, kind of like a roller coaster. different tempos, molto lento, so it's slower, and you're rollentondling into the last measure. So really play with it, pull at that tempo, slow down, and end beautifully. So that pretty much covers the piece. As always, um, if you have any questions or um, need any other help on this, go ahead and shoot me a text, email, or leave a comment. Thank you. Have a nice day.